Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So let's start today's seminar. Today's seminar speaker is Dr. Junichiro Kamura from IBS. And today he will talk about TB scale vector vector code from particular unification with vector like families. Please start. Okay, so thank you for introduction. And, and first of all, thank you for inv inviting me to giving a seminar at Kios. Unfortunately, I, not, I cannot visit there in person, but unfortunately, in the near future, I can visit there. So yeah, today I talk about the TV scale vector electrocoke from particular unification with vector families, and based on this paper in collaboration with these guys. Okay, so today I talk along this outline. The first introduce some related uh, uh, environment of about the electrocokes, and discuss then discuss about the uh, some pro how to solve the problems in to have the TV scale electrocokes from the particular unification, and then discuss the phenomenology. Okay, so let me start from this introducing the electrocoke. So electrocoke is in general carries the both baryon and the lepton numbers, and it's typically a scalar or the vector field. So it has a Yukawa coupling with coke and leptons, or the something like a uh, vector-like coupling is the coke and leptons through this gauge coupling-like couplings. So and there are, in general, there are several uh, possible origins to have the leptococcus. For instance, the scalar leptococcus is realized in the r party varying supersymmetry or some composite state may become a leptococcus in technical models. Or the other possibility, which we, we consider in this work, is that the, some leptococcus can la can appear in the extended gauge or Higgs sector. And the leptococcus is recently frequently discussed because there, there are several anomalies and the leptococcus is a good candidate to explain them. And the first one, the first kind of anomaly is a B2S mimi anomaly. So that here it shows one example of the anomaly. The, this is a clean observable like known as the RK, which is a ratio of the branching fraction of B2K mimi or the B2K EE. So because the standard model predicts uh, these, their, these processes are the same, uh, roughly the same, and uh, it's universal to the lepton flavored. So this quantity is predicted to be one in the standard model. However, the, the recent experiment shows that its value is deviated from one, and actually its value is slightly smaller than one. And so the, yeah, the old BABA result uh, also uh, measure the central value is below the uh, this uh, one, but the very re result is uh, consistent with the standard prediction. But the LCB uh, experiment gives uh, now the most precise measurement, and its uncertainty is very small, and uh, its central value is still derivated from the standard model value. And uh, now the current discrepancy is about uh, 3.1 sigma. And the interesting fact related to the BTS mimi anomaly is that there are uh, some discrepancies also in other observables like RK star or some other angular observables or branching fractions related to this B2S MIMI process in Crook rather. And to understand the how can we explain this anomaly, it's, it is very convenient to introduce these four, four Fermi operators improving the strange coke, bottom coke, and the muons, and also the electrons. Also, I don't write it in here. So, so the Many people try to fit the, these Wilson coefficients to these four Fermi operators that they, so that the, these, these anomalies in the observables related to B2S mu processes are explained. And so the, I borrowed the one figure from this paper. And uh, so they write, they fit the value of the Wilson coefficients of C9 and C10 to fit the observable data. And the red circle shows the, shows the combined uh, expand their favored regions, but the standard model predicts that it's zero. Uh, yeah, the, the, here the C9 uh, describes a new physics contribution, so the standard model is zero. So the, it's clearly deviated from the standard model prediction. And uh, after combining them, the, actually the, in terms of the chi-square analysis, the, the, are different, the chi, new physics contribution can explain the expanded data better than, more than five sigma uh, better than the standard model prediction. And if we assume that the C9 equal to minus C10, where the, this, this means that the, the leptonic current is also left to, left to uh, 
funded current. It's on the only this line. And in such a case, the most preferred value is about minus 0.4. Okay, and there's another type of anomaly in the B2C tau nu process. So that's similar to the RK, uh, we can also define the ratio of the B2D tau nu over the B2D L nu, L is a light flavor. And the standard prediction is that uh, this blue region about the, the RD is point, sorry, uh, RD is 0.3 and RD is about uh, uh, less than 0.6, uh, 0.26 or so. And while the expenditure value is at the red, given by the red circle, so there, there is some large discrepancy of the about four sigma. And similarly to the for, to the BTS mean process, we can also consider the four family operators of these forms. So here I just show the one operator which is relevant for our analysis. And but uh, so this Wilson coefficient CV1, the its favored value is about 0.05 to 0.01, uh, 0.1. Okay, so, so how can we explain this in some UV complete models? So there are so many ideas uh, proposed so far and I cannot follow all of them, but uh, I just uh, show some typical examples. So the, the, to explain the BTS Mimi anomaly, the one explanation is the introducing Z prime, which couples to the bot, uh, bottom quark and the strange quark and the mu ones. Or the, if the left quark is introduced, it can also explain the BTS mimi process. And similarly, B2C tau nu can be explained by some charged scalar field or both, uh, vector field, like a charged Higgs or the W prime. And also the left quark uh, can explain the, this B2C tau nu anomaly. And the interesting fact is that the left quark can in principle explain both anomalies at the same time. So this is the reason why the left quark is frequently discussed to to explain that these anomalies. Okay, so of course then we want to know the what's the region of the left quark. And in this work, we try to, to realize the left TV scale left quark in the particular magnification. I think the, tip, the particular magnification is a very motivated framework to unify the standard gauge group. So here the standard gauge group is U3 cross SU2 cross U1 can be embedded into the SU4 color times SU U2R times SU2R. So here the SU2R is uh, just, just the same one as the standard model. And, but the SU4, SU3 color is now become a SU4C and the hypercharge is embedded into the SU2R and uh, the B minus L part of the SU4. An interesting feature of the pastel magnification is that there's no gauge, uh, variant gauge symmetry. So this means that now the charge quantization is obvious. So we can explain the uh, charge cancellation of the electron and the proton. And another interesting feature compared with the SU5 uh, grand unification is that there's no coupling that re induces the proton decay. So in the pastel model, the proton is stable. So the, in the grand unification of SU5, and uh, it's a breaking scale, gut scale should be heavier than about 10 to 16 GV, which is very, very heavy and much, much larger than the TV scale due to the disconstraint of the proton decay. But uh, if in the pot salam, its scale can be much lower because of the stability of the proton. And as a unification theory, the quarks and leptons are unified into just a two march spread. So the SU2 doublet lepton and the quarks are unified into one much spread. Here I write L, and R contains all the SU2 singlet fields. An interesting feature is that the right handed neutrinos are predicted to be embedded into one much spread in the Pat much spread. So the right existence of the right handed neutrino is uh, predicted. And the phenomenological consequence of this unification is that the UCA coupling should be unified. This will give a strong constraint for model building. So where is the left quark? The one possibility is that the left quark can rise at the gauge boson of the SU4 breaking down to the SU3 times U1 B minus L. So here is the SU4 gauge, gauge boson. And the top left element is the B minus L boson. And in the quark direction, it's uh, nothing but the glue one. And uh, so the F of diagonal elements, uh, the left quark, which has a color and the hypercharge. So we have the left quark in the pastel magnification. So it's nice if we can explain the, this anomaly by this left quark from the pastel breaking. But uh, 
in typical models or a minimal model of the Pachitalam unification, there's a strong constraint on the leptococcus mass. So coming from the k long t mu e process. So the, here is a diagram uh, that contributes to the k long t mu e. And by cal calculating this, uh, its uh, value is about 10 to minus 11 if the leptococcus mass is 1 keV, while the excentral bounds it, uh, is at the 10 to minus 12. So we see that the leptococcus should be heavier than PEV. And I note that the discovering uh, to induce a kilo to mu E is not forever violating one in some sense because the leptococcus coupling only couples the down cork and the electron, which are both first generation. And similarly, the S leptococcus coupling to strange cork and the mu ones are both second generation. So even though there's no uh, forever violating couplings, the kilo to mu E process is induced. So this gives a very strong bound on the a lower band on the left mass. Okay, and another issue to achieve the low scale patsalam breaking is that the uh, Yukawa unification. As I said, the attractive feature of the patsalam unification is the quarks and leptons are all unified. So the naively speaking, we, we have only one Yukawa coupling in this way. So here the phi is a Higgs pi doublet. So we only have a Yukawa coupling. So of course, we know that the all the types of the fermions have different masses, up quark, down quark, and charged leptons, and the neutrinos have all different masses, and they, are, they have different mass, mass patterns. So we need this splitting. And so typically, there are, we can consider the several sources for the sparing mass splittings. And the one uh, typically considering thing is that the Riemann single group effect. But in this case, we need the large scale separation. And typically, we consider the grand unification scale uh, uh, where the, this unification happens. And after the long uh, group running, the splitting happened. But uh, so if we consider the lower mass, uh, lower breaking scale with the unification, then we may not explain the splitting by this effect. And also, the, we can also could explain the higher the mass splitting by the higher dimensional operators. but the, it may be difficult because it's negligible if the cut scale is the grand education scale or the Planck scale. But of course, we can consider the some lower cut scale, like in, for instance, the large vector dimensional model or composite models. We could consider low energy uh, cut scales, but uh, we don't consider such a possibility. And we try to explain the mass splitting without these effects, the dimension group effects, no higher dimensional operators. But instead, the, we rely on the third possibility of adding the matter fields then we can uh, get uh, some uh, splitting effects uh, from the uh, some pattern breaking effects. Okay, so I introduced the, the some basic backgrounds on our work. And so today that here is the goal of the, this work. So our goal is uh, to build a model with a TV scale leptococcus from the patch lamb and uh, to, to construct to have this model then we should explain the mass splitting and explain the leptococcus masses and the mixings at the tree level without the Riemann group effects to a high dimensional operators, which may be small or negligible in the low scale uh, breaking. And at the same time, we should suppress the branching k long to mu e, uh, even with the Pachstram breaking scale, the TV scale, not the PV scale. So the, then if once we can add, build a, such a model, we, we want to know the, whether the anomalies can be explained or not, and also the, what uh, flavor variations are expected in this model from the, for instance, leptococcus, or the, I, I will discuss about the extra Higgs bosons. Okay, so let me go to how to solve the mass splitting and suppression of the K-long to mu E. So let me introduce our model. So our model, the matter contents of our model is uh, given by this. So here the L and R are the chiral per perimions, and there are three generations. On, in addition to this, we also introduced the vector-like fermions. And so we introduced the vector-like uh, SUTL doublets and also the SUTL doublets. So, and I, I noticed that there are three generations, each kind of particle has three generations. And the, and the further, we also introduced the scalar fields to break the Pachstram breaking. So here we introduced the adjoint field and sigma, which is a 10 bar and the SUTR triplet and the Higgs pi doublet. So the Pachstram breaking is broken by delta and SU4 is broken down to, to the uh, SU3 cross U1 by the delta and the SU2R cross U1 B minus R is bro down, broken down to the hypercharge by sigma 
and uh, by doublet, Higgs by doublet violates the electric symmetry to the electric magnetic symmetry as usual in the standard model. So this is a overview of the our model. And so let's discuss about the flavor structure or the, how we can explain the fermion masses. Okay, so actually by only by the Higgs by doublets, we can have some splitting effects. So here is, uh, so by doublets has uh, two Higgs doublets in terms of the to air. And they have the two Higgs double entries here, VU and VD as usual in the two Higgs doublet models. And actually we can write down the two types of the Yukawa couplings in general. So the first one was, uh, which I wrote in before, but we can also write down the, this y 2 Yukawa coupling improving the additional epsilon tensor. So by the, as a, being a combination of these two Yukawa couplings, that there can be the mass splitting in the up sector and the down sector. So, but I note that this, this is not enough. Of course, we left the mass and the coke mass should be separated. And this can be done by considering the, you can coupling with the adjoint field, this delta. So delta will have the vacuum extension value of this form, where the, so the here three is for the left and directions and the minus one are the direction of the colors, S3. And of course, this is a S2 L singlet, so we cannot have, this delta cannot couple to the color fermions, but uh, because we introduced the vector generation, so that this delta can couple to, the, to them. So here is uh, the mass term and the delta Yukawa couplings with the vector generations. The past two terms in this LVR, uh, gives the mass term for the vector left under the quarks. The due to the, thanks to this delta verb, so the left vector like left mass and the quarks mass will be uh, separated by this effect. And also because we assumed that the vector generations have the same quantum numbers as the chiral ones, so they can be mixed. So the, the, due to the third and the fourth term, there can be mixing between the vector fermions and chiral fermions. So as a result, we can get uh, some splitting in the, in the standard generations. Okay, so let me write down the mass matrix, which is important to understand our, our model. So, the, so the now I, I remind you that the, the air F, capital F and the capital FR are the SUTL doublet, but the R and the small F are the SUTL doublet. And so we ordered uh, there are particles in this way. So the first two elements in, in the left-handed fermion are the doublets, but the last one is the SUTL singlet. But for the right-handed ones, uh, the first two elements are the SUTL doublet, while the last one is a singlet. So the, the, on, the, on the top left block, in the, this is a six by six matrix, and this at times uh, we are uh, coming from the Higgs by doublet, and also the, this uh, lower, right block is also come from the Higgs coupling, but the other elements of the, uh, of this, these orthogonal blocks uh, coming from the vector masses and uh, and uh, you can coupling with delta. So I note that the, so the web of the phi, the denoted entries denoted by phi, the web of the phi uh, separate uh, split, have the different values in the up sector and the down sector. On the other hand, the masses of delta or the vector masses have the can be different in the coke sector and the left on sector. So in summarize, so we can write down the, the each types of the Fermi mass matrix in, in this way. So here the, for the ME, uh, for the ME, the so the vector masses are given by the these the MRs, and these are common in the charge leptons and the neutral leptons. But the, the, these uh, entries coming from the Higgs by doublet are the different. So, but the, for the quark sector, these terms are common because they are both the down type quarks, but the, these uh, vector like part, vector like masses are different. So the, these are the structures expected in the, our, our scenario. So of course, this is uh, just a, mass matrix in gauge basis, we should, so we should the diagonal this mass matrix. So after diagonalization, we can get the electrical masses, electrical couplings in the mass basis. Here the Psi D and the Psi E are the down quarks and the charged leptons. And so the, 
at the reading from these interactions, uh, the star model particle to lepton coke mass uh, couplings are given by this. So here the IJ, uh, the one to three, runs all about the star model generations. But uh, I noticed that we realized that the, so we expected that the star model generations may come from the chiral fermions, uh, R or R. But in such a case, actually, as in the minimal model, the lepton coke has all the one couplings with the ED and the mu S. So there's no suppression here. So in general, if the both left uh, chiral leptons uh, becomes uh, the almost a standard of uh, coax and leptons. So in this case, the it's still, even though we can explain the mass splittings, but it's still uh, carrying to mu E is expected to be very large. So the lepto coax mass should be heavier than PEV scale. So our next problem is how to suppress the carrying to mu E. And our idea is as follows. So if we consider this, these textures, we can suppress the K-long to mu E. The point here is that uh, in these entries, uh, if the, these entries are very small, the, so let's say zero in here, in such a case, so now we see that the, there, these are, there are zero entries. So the, for the charge leptons here is the ME here. So this will give the masses for the standard model fermions, uh, standard model charged leptons. But for the down coke sector, so here is a zero, zero, if these are the zero entries, so we have the down coke mass coming from here. So this means that the, for the charged leptons, the chiral, some of the leptons are coming from the chiral left and the vector like we are. So it, because it's originated from this element. On the other hand, the down coke mass, uh, down coke coming from the, this element, which means that the, the left-handed vector like FR and the chiral R provides a sound order generations. So in this way, we actually, so we, after diagonalizing these matrices, uh, in this limit, there's no coupling with the left coaxes to the sound order generation. But here, this entry, top left entry is a coupling to the sound order fermions, and these are zero in this limit. So in this way, there's no coupling of the electron and the down coke couplings to the left coke. So it's nice that they, we found uh, some limits that there's no coupling with leptococcus coax and, uh, and uh, some of the fermions. But uh, I should note that the, this is, we need the fine tuning to realize this texture of course, because this element is coming from the vector like mass plus the you can coupling with delta. And I say that to, to suppress the K-long to mu E, this should be zero. So it's, there should be cancellation at here. And also the phenomenologically, this case is not interesting because we cannot explain the anomalies because there's no three level coupling with the sum of the fermion. So we cannot explain the anomalies. So anyway, from the theoretical viewpoint to avoid the fine tuning, we should uh, non-zero entries. But, and also to explain the anomalies, we should, uh, there should be uh, these uh, non-zero entries at here. But of course, it's nice, good to know that uh, there is some parameter space where we can uh, suppress the K-long to mu E. Okay, so let me summarize our ideas so far. So to suppress, uh, to suppress the K-long to mu E and explain the mass splitting in the fermion types. So we, uh, one simple explanation is that the, some cancellation happens at these entries colored by orange or red. Yeah, then we can we can suppress the canon to mu e, and the mass splitting is obvious because the now these entries are the different origins, so they can easily be the different structure. Uh, hello. Yeah. I have a question on your texture. So, for this texture, can you fit the observed the fermion masses? Spectrum? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Of course. Because the now the in model building, so this is uh, just arbitrary, mm. right? And mm. yeah, so yeah, it's maybe clear that we can yeah, explain the arbitrary masses and also the mixing angles, PMNS and the CK matrices. Okay. Yeah, because they are not uh, diagonal, but uh, just the three by three matrix. Okay, so do you have any other questions? No, okay. So let me continue. And so the question is that when we introduce the non-zero entries that here, can the anomalies are explained? Or, 
And also theoretically, we want to know the how severe tuning is required to, to realize the anomalies and the sub, in a suppressed K-long E and how to test the model. This is the subject I, I'm gonna talking about. Okay, so let me talk about phenomenology. So it's a bit technical, sorry, but uh, let me explain the some parameterization of us. So we want to introduce the, the non-zero entries that here. And so to, to quanti quantify the, these effects, so we introduce the unitary matrices here, so denoted by beats. So by the, these unitary matrices, there's a mixing uh, non-zero entries is here, and the, but the original matrix has a zero entries at, in these blocks. So by imposing the mixing angles in these unitary matrices, non-zero uh, elements arise up here. And this parameterization is phenomenologically convenient because uh, these unitary matrices uh, directly appears to the approximately appears to the elliptical couplings. So the in this notation, your know, notation, the elliptical couplings are given by here. So the V uh, directly uh, gives the uh, couplings of elliptical couplings to the standard model particles. Okay, and uh, okay, let me continue to discuss, uh, introduce the, some technical side of our model. So the V, uh, we, we introduced the mixing in this, the first three block and the latter three blocks because the, the because this octagonal elements are important for the standard model. So the, we introduced the mixing angles in, in the, between the, this first block and the second three blocks. And for instance, here the R23 is a mixing between the second element and the, and the third element. And so here we assume that they are real. And so the, this uh, squared sum is equal to one. Okay, and in later analysis, we shall assume that the SIJ are the all universal in some sense, and, uh, but uh, except for the S23 and the 22, which are important for the anomalies. We take the, the, some size of values at here, but for other angles, we, we take some small values in, in the, some numerical analysis. Okay, so let me discuss about the, whether we can explain the BTS mimi anomaly. So again, the, for the BTS mimi process by the left cork, so these couplings are important, coupling with the bottom cork and the muon and the strange cork to the muon. And so in this case, we, have, we only have the left current. So the C9 equals to minus C10, and its value is given by this formula. And so the numerical is varies about minus 0.51. If the left cork mass is at 5 TeV and its combination of the coupling is given by 0.02. So uh, this value is good because the one sigma favored range is at, uh, in this range. So this can uh, really explain the anomaly. And uh, we shall take the, these values of the angles to the 2, 3 element and the 2, 2 element. So here the 1 over square root 2 and the 0 0.04 times the 1 over square root 2, such that the, this combination of the of the coupling GX, DL, B mu and S mu uh, gives uh, 0 0.02. So in this case, we assume this pattern of the mixing angles, then the VTS mu anomaly can be explained if the elliptical mass is lighter than five T. So this, so from, we can, we could explain the VTS mu anomaly. So let's talk about the B to C tau new anomaly. So to explain this, we need the coupling with the bottom cork and tau and the chum cork to neutrino. So the, it's given by here, by this formula, and its value is estimated as in this way. So its value is about 0 0.09 if the electrical mass is at 1.4 TV and the coupling is this value. So the, as a reference, the physics uh, favored value is, uh, is in this range. So we need uh, about 1.4 TV in this case. The, I noticed that this, value of 0.25 is very large or even the, it's a maximal value. So because this is a combination with the coupling. So this cannot be larger than four G four squared over four, which is the 0.25. So even if the, this coupling is maximized, the left cork should be have lighter than 1.4 TB as it's well known that to explain the B to C tau new anomaly, the left cork must should be very light. So I know that the G4 should be related to the strong coupling and at the TV scale, the strong coupling is about one. So we expect that Z4 is also one. So this means that uh, to explain the B2C tiny anomalies, the electrical mass should be less than 1.4 TV. 
But this is not the end of the story. We should care about the Z prime boson mass because in particular magnification, the, all the masses are related with each other. And so the, here, the Z prime, Z prime boson mass is given by this formula, while the left cog mass is given by here. So by relating these uh, masses, there, there's upper bound on the Z prime mass by bounded by the left cog mass. So if the left cog mass is 1.8 TeV, the Z prime mass should be uh, lighter than 3.5 TeV. So there's upper bound. But we know that the there's uh, some strong constraints from the direct on search for Z prime boson at LC. And this figure shows the upper bound on the fiduciary cross section times the branching fraction uh, of the fr coming from the direct on search at LC. And uh, here, blue lines is a, stand is a Z prime model of the if the Z prime decays and in the same way as the Z boson, the, it's predicted on this line. So in such a case, the limit is about 5 dB. And actually, our Z prime in the Z prime in the Patsalam is like a Z boson because it's coming from the SA2R, which is just a mirror of the SA2R. So the, its coupling structure is very similar. And even though the, this Z prime can decay to the vector like generations, so such that the, this branch corruption can be lower, and then that maybe the, some, the bound will be relaxed. But even, even if we include such an effect, the suppression of the branching corruption, uh, it's still uh, Z prime mass should be heavier than 4.5 TeV. So it's obviously larger than this upper bound of 3.5 TeV. So that by relating, by relating the Z prime mass to, with the left coke mass, that we cannot explain that BTC tiny anomaly by our left coke, vector left coke of X mu from Patsalam breaking. So this is our conclusion. So in the later analysis, we simply assume that we try to explain only the BTS mu anomaly, and we don't try to explain the BTC tiny anomaly by this consideration. Okay, so let me discuss about the other flavor violations. As I said many times in this talk, so K long to mu E is very important. And in future experiments, the mu to E conversion is very interesting uh, possibility to prove our model. And also the mu to E gamma is, uh, as usual, it's very important to, to find the mu to E flavor violation. So the here, the K long to mu E, if we assume that the uh, B uh, elliptical coupling to the SMU is a larger, is large and compared with the others, the leading contribution is given by here. So if we assume the elliptical mass is at 5 TeV, its typical value is 10 to minus 12, which is uh, just below the experimental bound. So in this case, uh, this uh, coupling should be less than 10 to minus 5. And for the this coupling, the air is mu is, in our scenario, we assume that it's about 0.01 to explain the BTS minimum anomaly. In this case, the upper bound on the this coupling with DE is about 10 to minus 3. And for the mu in conversion, so we, the, our estimation is here. So its value is, is about 10 to minus 14 when the, when the BTS minimum anomaly is explained by the left cook mass of the, about 5 dB and the disorders of the couplings. So actually, this is a, an interesting range because it's still below the current limit, but in features, it's very above the feature sensitivity of the 10 to minus 17. So the, yeah, these experiments may prove the our scenario by yeah by, by the measurement yeah, yeah by the this new e conversion. Okay, so let me discuss about the new e gamma. So this is a loop induced process, so it's a bit complicated, but uh, the, our estimation is here. So it's about 10 to minus 13 if the the values are given by here. So the by the experimental current experiment value is about 10 to minus 13. So so that again, the VSM, the elliptical mass is 5 TV. And here the ZRX and ZRX are the elliptical coupling of the standard lepton and the vector like left quarks in the left and the right current. And the important thing is that this effect is really depend on that by the chiral enhancement effect. So roughly speaking, the chiral enhancement effect coming from this entry, delta D. So to suppress the BT mute E gamma in a small, then this delta D should be smaller than 100 dBV. So this is a constraint from the, from the mutate gamma. And so let me briefly discuss about G minus two. 
So the, this is another interesting anomaly discovered, uh, uh, measured also in the century. So in this case, if the disk iron enhancement effect is about 100 MeV, the mu g minus effect is ex expected to be 10 to minus 11, which is too small to explain the current discrepancy of 10 to minus 9. But I note that the, this is just a delta D is just a re representative value for the this entry. Of course, this has a flavor structure. So it's possible that for the mutant gamma, this effect is small, but uh, this effect for the mion mion coupling is sufficiently large. In such a case, we can explain the mion g minus in, in this model, but uh, in, in this work, we didn't try to do that. So, but uh, please remind that the our model can explain this if the delta D has a straight up structure. Okay, so let me show you the our plot. And so here that we introduced the mixing angles, uh, some small mix, universal mixing angles, but while the all over the parameter scanning, the BTS mu is always explained. And so the, here, the SQ is uh, mixing angles in the Koch sector, and these are uh, universal. And for the lepton sector, we take the universal values to them, except for the two, two and the two, three angles, which are important for BTS mu, mu uh, process. So this figure shows the various constraints on the SQ plus SR versus the SQ minus SR prime. So the three level contributions are sensitive to the SQ minus SR, the difference of the missing angles. So if they are the large, so the K-long to MUE process is enhanced. So that there's the upper bound up here or under here. So it should be in this range. And also the because the mutant conversion is induced at the tree level, this has a similar behavior. And in future experiments, the, the parameter space outside these green lines uh, will be covered. So in other words, only in other words, yeah, only inside the these green solid lines can survive after the fit after the, this future experiment. And for the x-axis direction. Uh, for the SQ process there, it's sensitive to the mutant gamma. So the, the current limit is around here, but the future experiments may cover the parameter space uh, over here. So after the, all the experiments will be done, then the limit is uh, about, about here. So the, only the very narrow parameter space can survive after the future experiments uh, looking for the mutant gamma. And on top of the, these uh, flavor variations, uh, we also study the fine tunings. So as I said, so we introduced these small entries up here. And so to, to realize smallness of the here, so we need some cancellation. So we defined uh, some functional measure of the maximal value of these entries over the minimum value of them. So this ratio is uh, about 500 around here, but uh, it's about it's more than 1,000 around here. So, but anyway, as far as the, the current limit allows the delta FD, is about 500, so which corresponds to the tuning, degree of tuning is about 10.2%. So this is not a very loose, not mild, but not very severe. So if we adapt the, these tunings, so we can explain the anomalies and the smallness of the KMTMUE in our uh, maybe kind of simple uh, patch style unification model, which is explicitly explaining the, the uh, fermion masses and the mixings. Okay, so before closing, let me discuss about the other flavor variation induced by the Higgs bosons. As I explained, we introduced the two types of Yukawa couplings to realize the up and the down mass splitting. So the both Yukawa couplings are realized by the other uh, linear combinations of the Yukawa couplings. So this factor induces a flavor violating couplings of the Higgs bosons. And here, the Yukawa coupling of Dunkirk to the heavy Higgs boson. And so the typically, its, it's structure is given by the this CKM dagger times the up Coke mass for the down sector, down sector Yukawa coupling. So the, its typical value is given by here. So the, we can see that there are non-zero octagonal elements. So we, this will induce the flavor violations. And I noticed that this effect is independent of the structure of the electrical couplings. So even if the, the electrical coupling doesn't violate the mu E flavor variation, we still have the flavor violation in the Higgs sector to realize that this up-down mass splitting. So this is a completely independent uh, discussions 
from the from the elliptical couplings. And so we discussed the we studied the neutral method mixing. And so the, here the CM is defined as a orthogonal element of MM bar transition of the our model and the standard model. And and also we define and the, sorry this figure shows that the bounds on the Higgs masses and uh, various rational operate uh, rational values. And so we see that the so this colored regions are the outside of the two sigma range from the central values. So of course the sum they predicts the one, but the, the standard the experimental uh, limits is uh, given by these colored regions for each observables. And so we see that the the strongest constraints come from this CBD over CBS. And here the CBD over CBS is uh, defined as a ratio of the CBD over the CBS. So this is a ratio of the mass difference of the B sub S and the B sub D. So this gives a strong constraint because as suggested in this paper, a recent paper, uh, that many uh, uncertainties are canceled out so that we have more uh, precise measurement. And uh, interestingly, our model, but uh, our heat, our model predicts uh, some deep opposite uh, contribution to the delta ms and delta md. So that our, this ratio becomes large. So the, then the, the tightest limit may come from the, this, this variable. And so we lead off from this figure that the, the current upper bound on the Higgs mass is about 4.8 TB when the tangent of beta is about two. But if the tangent beta is larger, the band will be relaxed and uh, the limit is uh, around here. So the lower band is about 2.8 TB. But yeah, so this has to give a very strong constraint on the parameter space. Okay, so wait to me. Uh, Sorry, one question. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you get any uh, bounds from top to Higgs charm decays? Top to Higgs charm? Uh, it depends on the, I mean- Because your matrix element seemed to be not small on, in the previous slide. Yeah, yeah, but uh, so in general, so actually it's a very, very aligned. Uh, yeah, it's a bit hard to, hard to say, but uh, yeah, actually, so the Higgs coupling is very aligned with the masses. And uh, yeah, by okay. the- yeah, so. I see, okay. Yes, yeah, the similar actually the coupling with Z boson or double bosons are also very uh, aligned with the sum of limit. And yeah, the reason is that basically the mixing is only for the this singlet and doublet state. So the structure of the, the boson coupling, some of the boson couplings are the, the still respected. See, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let me summarize. So we try to construct a model with TV scale vector elliptical from particular location with, the, with introducing the vector-like families. And to exp explain the lepton and coke masses and mixings at the tree level, uh, we consider the Yuka coupling with delta and phi and there's some mixing structure and, and then the lepton, the mass splitting is explained. And it, also the brand, we try to suppress the KLM to mu e, and we realize that if the BTS mu anomaly is explained, the cancellation of the 10.2% is required. At the, at, for the phenomenology, so the BTS mu mu is explained, but the BTC tau mu is a bit difficult to be explained due to the correlation with the Z prime search. And the mu e conversion process is very prom promising in future experiments, so we expect something will be found. Uh, yeah. In the in from this model, if this model is explained uh, in physics, and also the we found that uh, there's an uh, unavoidable flavor violating process in our model to explain the up down mass wave splitting. There's always a uh, uh, flavor violating effect from the heavy Higgs bosons. And uh, so actually, so this we are still working on this model, and we are st still looking for the effects from the loop corrections improving the scalar fields and the vector-like fields. And this will be give more interesting phenomenology, but uh, it's still in working progress. Okay, so 
that's all about my talk. So thank you for attention. Okay, thank you very much for the nice talk. And is there any questions? So hello, uh, I have a few questions. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you very much for a nice talk. Okay. I, uh, first of all, um, I, this is uh, related with uh, the previous question by Thomas. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, The G prime mediated flavor violation in the OCPOC sector is also strongly suppressed. Ah, uh, yeah, I think so. Because, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has a very similar structure, Z boson. So for similar reason, at the yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm. And then, uh, could you show the slide for B two S mu mu? B two S mu mu. Yeah, here. Mm -hmm. So here you uh, explain the. Uh, RK, RK star normally. Mm -hmm. And how about uh, the same diagram will also contribute to uh, B sub S to mu mu? Ah, but it's a vector interaction. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, C10, C10 can contribute. So, but uh, yeah, in the, the analysis, uh, C10 is also included, uh, B S to mu mu is included in. So we use the, so the uh, analysis, the, Includes a BSD mu mu, the fit of the C9 C10 to BSD mu mu also. So I think it's partially explained. So, uh, you, okay. So you you did not just estimate the, how much B sub S to mu mu branch ratio shift because of yeah, this. We didn't calculate it directly. Okay, uh, indirectly, you. you yeah. This global because, analysis already includes B sub S to mu mu. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, because I think it's here is a yeah, system, right. so that's yeah, right. that can yeah. contribute. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so you suppress K long to mu E, mm -hmm. but uh, how about B, B sub D or B sub S to mu E or tau, I mean, tau mu, something like that. Uh, so we also, uh, D, is mu. So yeah, we checked the, all the leptonic decay modes, mm. but the others uh, don't give a strong constraint as not, far not, as the decay with the mu is suppressed. Mm. Yeah. yeah, of course, I mean, but the, yeah. my question is whether you have a prediction which is uh, close to the, which is uh, uh, close to the near uh, discovery sense. Ah, that's right. It's, yeah, that can be yeah, interesting to show. Yeah, also we calculated, but uh, yeah, it's, I thought the, I, I, if I remember, yeah, I remember that it, it was very small compared with the current limits. Mm -hmm. So we didn't show okay. that, but uh, yeah. we have, yeah, I agree. So there is uh, some yeah, non-zero values mm -hmm. and it, it would be nice to show, but uh, we didn't show that in, yeah, in our paper. Okay, so uh, my last question is that the, I, I find that there are a few, quite a few works on the uh, Patisalam type uh, models for vector laptop quark recently. Mm -hmm. And could you compare the difference between your approach and other others' works? So I think we first time to show the way to to avoid the K long term UE and explain the the masses that explicitly. So actually we showed the very explicit values in our numerical analysis. Mm. And so yeah, you can find their values. So now it's a nine, nine, nine times nine by nine matrix. So I don't want to show you in this talk, but uh, yeah. So, and so yeah, usually this is, these are just assumed that uh, these are explained, but we now it may be clear that we can explain that there must be things in this, by these textures and lowers the, uh, yeah, upper bound on uh, lower bound on the elliptical masses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a new point. Mm -hmm. I see. 
Yeah. So, so then in other other in other works in in, in the works of, of by other groups, they what what do they do with the uh, Kelon community? Well, so, the unification. Yeah, they also study, but uh, by assuming so they don't show these textures, mm. but uh, in general they can uh, avoid it can avoid the that limit by by kind of this mechanism, but they don't show some explicit ah, way to do okay. that. I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I also had one question, but I might have missed it. Uh, you were mentioning in the beginning that you, or generically, you assume a uh, Yukawa coupling at the gut scale, right? And yeah. then you uh, evolve it down to the. Ah, no, uh, sorry. We don't include the relation group effect. We just. Uh, consider the three level couplings at the TV scale. Okay, so if you would yeah. run those up to the, uh, but normally you would uh, expect uh, one unified coupling at the uh, at the gut scale, and then when running it down to the TEV scale, you would uh, assume that this is also changing the mass matrices, right? Ah, that's right. If we include the initial effect, of course, uh, uh, quantitatively they're very different. Okay, so so are those textures maintained by the running? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very non-trivial point. With uh, but but uh, so a model the Pachisalam, at the Pachisalam scale, the the bars are fixed. I mean, so the yeah. running. Yeah. So yeah, that uh, may be a good point. Yeah, if we include the initial group of running or other quantum effects, the, the, this texture. Uh, yeah, may not to be uh, preserved, and so yeah, that's a some technically difficult point. Yeah, right. So, so in other words, it could be that the fact that we have zeros in the textures, uh, textures there, um, does not mean that those textures are zero as well at the gut scale. Let's say it like no, this: no, you, no. you need to have an, uh, have a coincidence at the uh, TEV scale in order to. Uh, for those contributions to cancel. Yeah, yeah. I see. So yeah, at TV scale, this should happen. Uh, this kind of structure should happen. I yeah. see. I see. Mm. Uh, I think one more. Sorry, one more question, which is also related with the Thomas question. For the, uh, I mean, this uh, bio anomaly stuff, you you integrate out the laptop at the few T. TV scale, yes. and in principle, you have to include the algae running from uh, TV scale to B, B major scale. Ah, yeah, precisely so, speaking, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, what's what's going on about this? Is it uh, not so important or? Ah, uh, yeah, we suppose it is a uh, subdominant, mm. and so actually we have so many parameters, so we don't care about the order one values actually. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because we have so many parameters. If we want to some change in values, so we can do that. Yeah, at least for the BTS mu mu is pretty easily explained. So mm. we we can change its masses, its mass by yeah. If we want to slightly smaller, then we can have the heavier masses. So yeah, but uh, yeah, quantitatively we can we showed that we can explain the anomaly. Mm -hmm. And for quantitative study, yeah, we need to include more effects, more precise effects, more yeah, higher effects. So within your approach to the uh, fermion mass and mixings, can you fit both uh, uh, mixing pattern in the quark sector and the... Uh, yeah, so, so actually I prepare only for the quarks. Okay. Sorry, this is a double boson coupling. I only show the double boson coupling. Mm -hmm. So you can see in this three by three rock, this is, looks like a CK matrix, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like this, we can explain all the mass mixing angles mm -hmm. and the masses. I see. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you can find the, all these values mm -hmm. in the paper, but okay. the, yeah. <laughs> Okay, any other questions or comments?
it seems like there is no more questions. So let's thank to our speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.